nipple piercings. Barbell or ring? Which is going to work best? Coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, that's me, episode number 44. So you should probably stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio, located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking to you at a level of expertise as somebody who has done numerous nipple piercings, thousands upon thousands over the last 25, 25 odd years, um, with rings and with barbells. Anybody that watches this series has known that I usually do five advantages, five disadvantages. I'm going to do things a little bit different this time. It's more kind of like a review. We're doing a verse, uh, rings versus barbells. And in this case, I came up with 10 things that should normally go into your decision process when picking out jewelry. And those are, first off, how they look, of course, how secure the jewelry is, um, what the profile and noticeability of that jewelry is going to be if you're in a situation where you need to hide it. Uh, fourth, swelling, especially during, this would be mainly during the healing process, but it's important to think about. Number five, how much movement the jewelry is going to have. Number six, how easy is it going to be to use? How easy is it going to be to take out and put back in if you need to? Because it might come up. You never know. Nobody knows the future. Number seven, how much variety of jewelry is there out there in that particular style? Number eight, the cost, because come on, let's face it, we're all on some form of a budget. Then the last two, contact, how much contact the jewelry is going to have or how more prone it is to contact. And the last one, how much it's going to affect migration and rejection of the piercing. First one, the look of the piercing. What is that style that it's going to portray? We all do consider this. With rings, you have kind of more of a classic look. It's a little bit more bold. It's a little bit more out there. With barbells, you have a more subtle, minimalistic kind of look. You just see kind of basically those two balls. So if you want something really just kind of light and elegant, it's going to be more a better option. So on this one, I think it's pretty much a tie. So the score so far, one all. So that moves us on to the next one, security. How secure the jewelry is going to be during the healing process and afterwards. With this one, rings, because of the style of jewelry, are really pretty much designed to be in the body for a long period of time. Whether it's captive bead rings or it's seamless fixed bead rings, etc., they tend to, once that jewelry's in there, it's not going anywhere. With barbells, the only real disadvantage you have is those ends. They do screw on. They can come unscrewed over time. And one of the things with barbells is once you've had the jewelry for a long period of time and it kind of becomes a part of you, you don't notice when those balls are coming unscrewed or you don't check them as often as you did when you first got the piercing. And then one day you get it out of the shower and ding, it's at the shower drain and now it's down to the point of no return. So you're off to go buy more jewelry. This one I have to give to ranks. So rings goes ahead too. One. Profile and noticeability would be the next one. With rings, because they're larger, they take up more space. And because with nipple piercings, we usually have to pierce with rings that are a lot wider than the piercing area to allow that to be as flat as possible inside that piercing. They are going to be more noticeable. They're going to be more out there. They're going to be possibly, you can see them under clothing more so than barbells. So they're going to be a little bit more noticeable. With barbells, you kind of just have those two balls on both ends. Um, initially, with the longer barbell, it might be a lot more noticeable. You can go with smaller balls if you're really self-conscious about it and don't want people to notice it under clothing. But on this one, definitely, I believe this one goes to barbells. Bringing it back up to a two-all. That moves us on to the fourth one, swelling. Swelling is always a factor during the healing process. It's not so much of a factor after the healing, but it is definitely something that needs to be taken under consideration when you initially get a piercing. With uh, rings, Eva, you generally have a little bit more leeway than you do with barbells because it'll allow to swell a little bit into that curvature. 
Um, it's not the best option, but it does give a little bit more and allow a little bit more extra space for swelling. Barbells, on the other hand, you are stuck at that length. If your piercer chooses a piece of jewelry that's too short, your body expands beyond it, it'll start digging and impacting into the sides and can cause a whole load of issues that can be very difficult to get rid of once they begin to start. And will more than likely require you to have the jewelry replaced with a longer barbell until the swelling subsides or until the piercings heal. So this one goes to rings as it creeps ahead. Three, two. Now let's move on to movement, the fifth one. With rings, because they have a higher profile and because they're curved and they stick out there and they have a lot, they take up a lot more room. They're a roomy gal. They're going to move a great deal more than barbells. You're going to not only have the possibility of them sliding through the piercing, but you're also going to have the situation where they kind of flop back and forth, um, kind of swing, like a swing. With barbells, yes, they can uh, slide back and forth, but unless you physically spin them, they're probably not going to spin. This is important because we want to limit the amount of movement during the healing process. The more movement you have, the more prone you are to migration, rejection, infection, and prolonged healing because you can always dislodge or break that. That's why if anybody ever tells you to move the jewelry during the healing process, you should slap them upside the head and go say, Hey, you need to watch Davo's videos because we all know you're not supposed to do that. It's not 1982. And you don't work at Claire's. So that one goes to barbells, bringing it up to three all. And now let's move on to the sixth one, ease of use. How easy is it to wear this jewelry? How easy is it to change this jewelry? How much of a hassle is it going to be if you need to take it out? With rings, regardless of the design, generally you either have to have a little bit of skill or to some degree a level of uh, strength to remove the, the jewelry. Uh, it's especially true of captive bead rings. There's quite a learning curve with those. Beaded and fixed rings and seamless rings, you have to bend it like a corkscrew and some people don't have that amount of uh, strength in their hands to do that. Um, with... Uh, Segment rings and etc. They can be extremely difficult to change and with really large gauge jewelry um, Usually most people when you get over that 14 to 12 area where nipples are usually pierced at 14 or 12 It's there's so much tension on that jewelry that they need some type of tool to remove the jewelry or if it's a fixed bead or it's a seamless ring They may need a tool to bend it however <laughs> There are circular barbells, and that's kind of the one that throws the wrench in the whole thing. But for the majority, rings, not easy to change. Barbells, on the other hand, all you have to do is unscrew the end and slide the jewelry out, and then slide it back in and start it again. Yes, those balls can be a pain in the ass sometimes, but they're a lot easier than Kathy bead rings to change or remove. So that takes it up to ring three, barbells four, as we move into the next one, variety. There's a large variety for both of these. So I would say it's a tie. There's lots of different ends, lots of colors, lots of materials, and lots of styles that you can choose from, regardless if you have barbells or you have rings. So this one, we're going to tie it up, bring the score to four, five. It moves us on to the next one, cost. Here's one that rings really excel at. They're very cheap to manufacture. Uh, even the high-end manufacturers, it's usually their, their cheapest piece of jewelry. The reason for that is, is because barbells take a lot more time, a lot more expertise, and a lot more material to produce. With rings, you have basically a ring and possibly a ball. With barbells, you have the posts, you have the two balls, so that you have more moving parts. Then additionally, you have to uh, tap and thread the post. Then you have to thread the ball or attach threading to it. So it takes a lot more time, energy, and materials. So usually, barbells are twice the price of rings in most cases. So this one goes to rings, which brings it up to five all. wonder where this is going to end up at. And on to number nine, contact. Contact, of course, is how much contact the jewelry is going to have during the healing process or afterwards. 
with rings because they're larger, they're more out there, they're going to have a heck of a lot more contact. They take up more room, they're more prone to get caught on things, they're more prone to uh, movement because of that reason, and they're more prone to get snagged on things. Barbells, lower profile, less contact, smaller, not as much of it hanging out of the body as there is with rings. However, I have to say that if they get caught, they do not feel good. And usually they get caught really good because it kind of slips underneath that ball and just, uh. But I'm definitely going to give this one to Barbells, making it 5-6. Barbells winning. When we move into the last one, which is migration and rejection. For those that don't know what migration and rejection is, I did a whole video on it, but let's explain it. Migration is where a piercing shifts and moves during the healing process, sometimes side to side, sometimes outward, sometimes downward. Rejection is where your body completely rejects the jewelry out of the piercing, where uh, you know, it, you're not gonna be able to save it. With rings, because of the movement, because the additional profile and abuse, because of the curvature that is involved with rings um, or in other circular jewelry, is gonna be more prone to migration than the barbell. All those things that I just said, abuse, contact, and curvature, lead to migration, and they lead to rejection and other problems. So in that one, definitely goes to the standard barbell, making barbells the winner, five to seven. Now, somebody's going to bring it up, so we might as well answer it right here. Curved barbells, I don't suggest them. They create the same situation or problem that you have with rings as far as the tightness or curvature. They also move just as much as rings do and do this really uncomfortable flip-flop. Plus, the balls are positioned at this weird angle that makes the piercing look crooked or pierced low. So, don't pierce with curved barbells. Uh, if you want to wear them afterwards, I guess you can, but... They're not what I would advise. And even a heeled piercing, if you put tight curvature in, can cause migration and rejection. So always keep that in mind. Lastly, whatever in doubt about the jewelry, talk to your piercer. Go through that. Part of the idea behind these videos is to give you enough information that when you go and you talk to your piercer, you'll know what they're talking about and you'll be able to carry on an educated decision or educated discussion with them and come up with a... Uh, a good solution. The other thing is, is you'll know when your piercer is not knowledgeable enough to pierce you in the first place. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you learned something. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of them, hit the notification uh, bell after you subscribe. If you would like to uh, purchase some of our merchandise, we have a lot of it, a lot of different varieties, a lot of different stuff, a lot of fun stuff from t-shirts to leggings to tote bags to coffee mugs. Check out our merch store, link in the description. And just one final thing, I hope all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Go out there, enjoy yourself, and take care of yourself.